Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. We're in it, people. Everyone has a win. Everyone has a loss. There's a no hitter. A team is playing in Sacramento. Let's talk ball. Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball, presented to you by Seat Geek. My name is Jake Storielli. His name is Trevor Plouffe. BBD behind the dish. Over a week into the baseball season, uh, luck- luckily that packed house in Flushings got to see the Mets get their first win and the Tigers get their first loss. That everyone's in it now. Uh, every fan base knows what it feels like. Uh, to get that in and out of the way, Trevor Plouffe, how are you doing, man? I'm a little mental health check. Well, everyone on the YouTube right now, uh, I I currently look like a cursed image. Uh, threw on <laughs> threw on uh, the John Boy Reds jersey, a gift from Tucker Barnhart a couple years ago. A uh, big John Boy media guy. Now on the snakes. Um, I was looking like a bat boy because I was wearing my Yankees jersey with a Yankees hat. Going to opening day in a little bit at the stadium, so excited for that. Trev, I've seen a lot of, oh, God, and I just said everyone's got to win, everyone has a loss. That's that's not true. It's not true. Not everyone has a loss. I'm going to stop you there, but. Wow. Uh, okay, well, we just lost all of our our Marlins listeners, uh, but we've kind of been mad at them ever since that Jazz Chisholm Miggy Row thing. But, Trev, you've been getting dragged by our social team, dog. Are you Okay. Like yeah, like what started that? Did I? Like, I, I must know. have made somebody mad. And who's running it? Let me just tell you something. You know, that's not Tay Jack. Is that is that Kyle? Like, what's going on? I'll check, dude. When they get I hot on something, the they just they don't stop. I think it's Kyle. Kyle, you know, he's yeah. got all his little minions coming after me. It's fine. I can take it. I can handle it. I yeah, would like some highlights razor. of my career posts. You do have highlights once in a too. while. Yeah, yeah. You were an average couple, player. It's just as much good as bad. Thank you, BBD. You look like Aaron Boone right now. If he went through his right? closet yes. and just put on some shit. Remember? Can you do like the strikeout thing? There's that picture of him doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that. Uh, how we doing? I'm doing great, dude. Yeah? It's an early morning app. I guess it's only 15 minutes earlier than usual, but uh, I don't know, man. Like Baseball's hot. I'm excited. The season's kind of like... So I guess not in full swing yet, but um, I think there's enough to diagnose a few different teams. Uh, my twins are struggling offensively, so I'm going to get in there and maybe make a call and say, hey, guys, this is what you got to do. No, I'm never going to do that. Mm. Uh, shout out Dick Bremer, though. Shout out Dick Bremer. My guy got the TV broadcasting booth at Target Field named after him, and he threw oh. out the first pitch to Joe Mauer. It really was a nice ceremony for him, so I do want to actually give him a shout out. So there it is, Dick. Hey, and how about as we're giving shout outs, uh the Central Division's currently pulling their weight. I'm I'm happy for you. And like there's I don't know, I I'm hoping that becomes a conversation of this season is that we went through this off season and it was like, man, the NL Central, anyone can win it. The AL Central, your Twinkies were the favorite and then everyone else can get involved basically. And I don't know, I'm hoping that we ignored the fact that I do think a lot of these teams got better than last year. So if the NL Centrals can be balanced but a step up, I think the product of baseball, like any given night, you can kind of look at 15, 20 ball clubs that got some, I don't know, maybe hope is just too much in the air for me right now. You need everybody, listen up. This is a little PSA announcement, Okay. okay? Everyone needs to stop talking crap about the central divisions okay like yes like any division they might have a bad team or two at the bottom but like that is everywhere okay there's some good teams there and let me ask you something how did Eno Saris pick the Pirates to make the playoffs this year what is going on then why does he know things that nobody else knows Eno always knows bro um yeah, yeah they uh Miss you Eno. if they keep this hot month going They'll just need a little more because they did do it last year. Let's That's start true. talking some ball, and let's talk about the DraftKings Sportsbook. It's time for fans to head to the ballpark. I'm doing it today. Trev did it on Monday. And go root for whatever baseball team you want to root for. And with DraftKings Sportsbook, you can get into the action. 
All new customers who bet $5 will get $150 in bonus bets instantly. And don't forget to use our code TALKING. So, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use promo code TALKING. Bet just $5 on any wager and get $150 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code TALKING only at the DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. Yes, Trev. Speaking of DraftKings, I got a request out to CAA Okay. to use their Dodger Stadium tickets. They're very nice. Okay. Yes or no, that's the bet that I get them. Oh, well, CAA, uh, depends who's coming to town. <laughs> well, I'm trying to go to the Padres series. That's the, uh, uh. On a weekend. Hmm. <laughs> Padres weekday. What time is that game? Padres weekday, I think I got you. Saturday, I said Saturday or Sunday. You gave them options, so that's good. That was, uh. Yeah, you it's get the, the ticket game's always so funny, man. I I had a buddy. It's supply and demand. Okay, a little business early on. Someone was like, hey, Yankees game Saturday night. The weather's bad, and it's the final four is on, especially like UConn. That my buddy basically was already in like, <laughs> so. hey, I got tickets to work. Anyone want to go? And everyone was like, kind of not, man. Like, <laughs> let me know in the summer, <laughs> and I'll see you there. Let's talk some National League Baseball, please. Please. Trev, your CAA Los Angeles Dodgers, they sweep the San Francisco treat, the Giants. um, And I think we're going to hear this a lot this year, man, because the first game, Mookie and Freddie combined for five hits. Uh, The second game, Mookie and Freddie combined for five (laughs) hits. Uh... These guys are out of control. Uh, Otani homers in the last game. They even hit, uh, they beat Logan Webb, and they've kind of had Logan Webb's number a little bit, and they beat him, and this is kind of gross to me, a Ryan Brazier opener with our guy Ryan Yarber as the bulk guy. My goodness. Um, the Dodgers did what Dodgers do. Uh, they sweep the Giants. We'll talk about that one a little bit. My Cincinnati Reds, they take two out of three from the Phillies. A tight one in the first game. We're going to Bunos Cantos, and there's Spencer Steer. Grand slam in the 10th inning. That'll about do it, huh? Uh, The first Reds grand slam in extra since the Todd father, Todd Frazier. Bryce Harper followed that up with a three-homer day. Love that. Ricardo Pinto, drive to the game. You're pitching the final four innings, dude. Uh, That's some fun. And then the the Reds took it in the rubber match. Six hits, five of them extra bases. And how about Frankie Montas twirling the damn pill in Cincinnati? little rain in that one. There was a lot of rain all around the league. The Cardinals and your Padres teed it up for three, and the Cardinals took the first two games. Gibby, seven innings, two earned runs. Yep. Uh, The boys were hitting off of uh, knuckleballer Matt Waldron in that first game. The second game, the Cards take. Wilson Contreras, his second day with a two-run homer. We like that from the catcher spot. Uh, The Padres salvage it on the last one. Joe Musgrove pitching Kyle Higashioka. My guy, he throws out two base runners. He hits a home run. How about that from your backup guy behind the dish? And congrats to Jackson Merrill, his first show homer. Cubs sweep the Rockies. Uh, This might be another thing you hear a lot this year. Uh, We talked about Imanaga's uh, debut a little bit in the midweek episode. Uh, They had a little opener follower with some alliteration on the final game. Luke Little opens Ben Brown with the bulk, babe. Uh, they get it done there. Christopher Morell keeps hitting homers. I saw him on a list of, I think it was Bell, or who was it? Chris Bryant and someone else for most homers in 200 Cub games or whatever. That's a bad stat. Here's a good stat. The Pittsburgh Pirates stay hot, hot, hot. They take two out of three from the Nats. They take the bread games. Marco Gonzalez does enough while that lineup be hitting. The boys are getting on base. I think it like a 381 clip early on this year. Uh, and then Martin Perez, 6.2, two earned runs. Uh, while Brian Reynolds and Connor Joe's been doing a lot of hitting this season. 
Uh, Pirates, they get their first loss, but they are 6-1 and one and feeling good about it. Eno Saris always knows, and that's what happened in the National League. Why does Eno know things? Dude, I... Oh, Stuff Plus. Uh, you know, what? maybe we'll save this for an August episode, but maybe we'll build out our, build out our front office. Ooh. You know? I just watched Moneyball with my kids last night. Yeah? How'd that go? They loved it. They loved yeah? it. Yeah? Really? They're like, my daughter's like, is he going to get fired, Daddy? <laughs> I'm like, maybe they should fire that. Sequel's going <laughs> to suck. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Do you think him and John Henry actually sat down at Fenway and like had like a coffee and talked about Bill James and Probably. dinosaurs? Like, I don't know. I think once you're that level and you're that kind of deep in it, I don't know. I don't know. Sound off below. Um, Trev, I mean, the, the two, we're, you know, we're trying to get a little more topical uh, because we, again, peeling back the curtains, you guys know your team better than us. There, there's times when we're talking about game two between the Reds and the Pirates that we kind of felt dumb because we're just reading a box score. So we, we want to hit some big topics. Um Dodgers are a big topic, and they're going to be all season. Uh, they give the Giants the business early on. Uh, two five four games to wind it down. Uh, and I know, I think we might be hearing a little bit about Mook Man later. Uh, you know, I don't want to give anything away, but um, I, I don't know. It, and anything you want to hit with, with your Dodgers? Or anything, that, anything that's not obvious with these Dodgers? Well, I'll say about the series, like the, the Giants are a dang good team. Like they're going to be a good team. They just run into, they ran into a buzz stop. And the Dodgers are kind of buzzing right now. People are, yeah. you know, they're at home for the home opener and, and they're going, man. I mean, yes, we know about the top three of the lineup, uh, but the complimentary pieces have been really good as well. And you were on Teoscar, the signing early on. He's been doing his thing. They've been getting good pitching performances. I mean, James Paxton, I saw him. I didn't know who was pitching. I went to the game. And I was like, oh, James Paxton's pitching. And I was talking to my buddies. Like, yeah, he's he's not gonna like he'll throw a little bit and you know, we'll see we'll see how far he can go. He goes five innings. Yeah. Or, yeah, five innings fucking five walks. Earnings. Five walks too. So he he had the a lot of pitches. Yeah. Like they just they just kind of have a little bit of everything going on right now for them. Um <laughs> it's it's really it's really incredible to watch because people say, Oh, like I think the word that People used to describe their lineup as relentless, and it kind of just feels that way. Like somebody is gonna get you, yeah. And, and like if it's like a tightrope act, man. Like you have to be on your game one through nine. Like you can't you can't give in in any certain any because it'll snowball on you. That's really what it feels like watching this team. Yeah, and I, <laughs> you gave me a little credit there for Teoscar. Um, you know, Teoscar did get I think twenty four and a half milli this year, so I. You know, probably not my. But it was an under the radar signing. It right. really was. Well, that's the thing. I, you know, I, I think him and you know were him and Solaire in similar buckets. Like I, I think Solaire has a little more pop potential, but Teoscar can kind of play the outfield every day. That Teoscar took a one year deal and is kind of betting on himself, and it, it currently looks great. Um, you know who got the save in that last game uh, for the Dodgers? Denilson Lamette. That's a name. You know, not to go full Obi Wan. That's a name I haven't heard around these parts in a long time. Um, but if I see a name like that in the Dodgers bullpen getting some outs, that'll that'll scare you a little bit. Yeah, I think I saw someone tweet. He's got like two clean appearances, and everyone just tweeted like, "All right, Dodgers did it again. That's messed up." Yeah, right. So, uh, I mean, the, 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 the stat that we have on our page that just is exactly kind of encapsulating what teams that face the Dodgers are going to have to deal with is they've scored five runs, at least five runs, in all nine games they played in this season. (laughs) It's a problem. That's a problem. Like we're talking about the Blue Jays going how long without a freaking hit? Yeah. And here are the Dodgers scoring five runs in every single game. I mean, they're going to be a problem. We know that. And I think I took the under on their win total, and that's freaking me out a little bit. Mm. But, you know, long season ahead. Yeah, I, I I always I always go on my lineup depth ramps, and you know I'm when I talk about my Cincinnati Reds, I'm like, how about Jake Fraley in that six hole? 
and then it's I'm looking at Teoscar and Muncie, and it's like, well, uh, the uh, the Dodgers. Dodgers season rolls on. And, yeah, if you're the Giants, like, jung Hoo Lee's been hitting uh, Solaire hit a little bit. Patrick Bailey. So, I don't know. I they, think they, they, have a, they have a squad there. They're going to be okay. Anytime I think you come away from a Dodgers series, you, you kind of got to wipe that and be like, all right, uh, let's, let's hope we get something better next time. Trev, how about I, I think I found my way to uh, make this a little more topical with, with the, the other National League games. Because all of them do have a central team. The Reds, the Cardinals, the Cubs, yeah. the they Pirates. All series. They all won. Wow, how about that? And, hey, we only have the data we have right now. We have seven or eight games from these teams. Um, and I don't know. I, I guess I gushed a little bit at the start of the show, but I, I did tilt my head last night, and I was like, when I did the Pirates, TPP. I was hell bent on taking the under because I need more unders. And then I looked at the lineup and I was like, okay, like I, I, I kind of believe like it. The Pirates lineup felt like it got better. Uh, the Reds had a sneaky, nice little off season. I think they spent over a hundred mil, and they got a year older. The Reds got better. The Cubs, you know, they've got a bunch of top prospects. They went out. They got better. The Cardinals had to be better, right? So, um. I'll pitch it to you wide and see where you want to zoom. I think the Pirates have kind of taken a little bit of the headlines because they're off to another hot start. But I'm, Trev, you have me drinking a little Central Kool-Aid. The Kool-Aid's good in the Central, yeah. man. You talk about, you know, the Reds go into Philadelphia. They take two out of three. You know, Frankie Montas, what does he bring to the team? You know, he's healthy. He's, you know, he's throwing the ball really well. Yeah. Uh, the line there was five and two-thirds with one earned run. I mean, this is against a very good Phillies lineup. Uh, if, if he is healthy, uh, then you got, you know, you got yourself a rotation. Andrew Abbott went out and had a good start against them as well, like, I think that's the thing that we always question. Like the offense, even with all the injuries that they've had, like it's it's still there. And you asked that question last night. Like, what should we talk about? One one of the replies was, "Let's talk about the Twins trade for Tyler Malley Ooh. and who they gave up." Owie. Ooh. Not that the Twins necessarily needed like more position players. I feel like they do have enough at the big league level and 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 the Triple A level, but you know their offense is stalled a little bit. And here, you know. You got freaking Spencer Steer hitting a grand slam and Carnation Strand hitting a walk off home run. It's like the Reds are going to be fun to watch all year. I think Montas is a huge, huge plus if he can, you know, just be healthy. People forget how good this guy can be. Yeah. I believe 2021 was his big year. 2022, he had a good year um, with the A's before getting traded over to your Yanks. Yikes. Um, And then, you know, he's following the Sunny Gray pattern. That's what people are saying. Yeah. So that's a, that's a big that's a big plus for them. Um, as far as the Pirates go, like they're kind of like doing it in all facets, man. Like uh, their lineup be hitting. Mm. We got a lot of guys contributing up and down, which is nice to see. Again, like you know, it's early in the season, but we're getting a lot of good performances offensively, defensively. Like they've improved a ton. Like just having O'Neill Cruz back at shortstop is huge for them. Uh, a full season of Triolo at second base. Like they they got. They got dudes that can go do it. So I think that coincides with, you know, the pitching's been good. The bullpen's been really good. And and here we are, like, again, at the beginning of the season, talking about uh, these Pirates, who I think, like, the way they've been winning has kind of, like, been the most sustainable way. Like, it's just kind of been coming from all sorts of different areas on their team. Like, we did look at the roster. We did say, okay, it looks a little bit better. It looks a little bit different. But you got to go out and play the games and – so far, what we saw in the preseason, we're seeing show up on the field early on. So it's really, it's nice to see, man. And right now, you couldn't guess who's going to win the NL Central. And I love that for baseball. No, and I, I think it, it hit a sad, it hit a little bit of a sad note at times last year because you were looking at, well, outside of the Brewers, like again, the Brewers deserve respect. They've been a well-run organization, and they are 4-1, so we'll, we'll get to them. Um, but, yeah, I, I, Pittsburgh's getting on base, currently leading baseball and getting getting on. The Reds are first in stolen base. I guess that's the other fun start. The, these teams kind of play different brands of ball, that it, if they can continue to stay elevated, I think that's, I think that's really good for baseball uh, and a fun watch. Like, the Pirates have been on base and bullpen. Um, 
The Reds, uh, you guys know I love their lineup depth. And I think, you know, we saw it with Texas last year that there was a point where Texas had nine MLB starting pitchers on their roster that you knew. And that's where the Reds are kind of a light version of that where, uh, you know, they got some guys healthy. They've got some guys in AAA. I think Lodolo is rehabbing right now. Like, um, you know, what Richardson pitched a little bit for them last year. That, yeah, hey, if Montas clicks, cool. And then if if he gets banged up or has a rough week, then it's kind of on to the next guy. That They have options to pitch, which I, I think that's part of my new regular season formula. Have a lot of – have good offense and then have pitching options and something will figure itself out. Um, again, I don't, don't think that's too analytical. Um, yeah. I, I think give a little love to the Cubs. You know, I know it's sure. the Rockies, and we're always gonna say, "Oh, it's the Rockies." But you go and and I believe it was the home opener, right? This uh, yeah, this, uh, yeah, we this got series. the the electric pyrotechnic show, which oh yeah, yeah, oh. that was that was something to oh. marvel at. You know oh. what though? Like, if I'm a ball player, I don't want sparks just flying all over the place when I'm running okay. out. Okay, like, put those okay, get it away Trev. from me. Nice. Get away from me. <laughs> Baltimore does massive flames. I don't know why. I feel like I saw so many home openers in Baltimore during my times, and they put like flames out there. Um, flames like big emoji. Dog shit. Yeah. Um. Here's this. Here's like the starting pitching the Cubs uh put out there against uh the Rockies. Uh, Shota Imanaga, my guy, my pick to win NL Rookie of the Year, went out and carved them up in some really uh tough weather. Uh, nine Ks. The strikeout stuff from him has been has been nuts. Uh, Javier Assad, who's like such a fun watch, uh, six in his pitches, zero in runs. Uh, and then they use an opener, uh, and then had a bolt guy. And between Luke Little and Ben Brown, five innings pitched, one earned run. Yeah. We're doing it, people. Yeah, uh, I I am gonna put the slightest Rockies asterisk right now because my God, it's been a it's been a tough tough go for. My rocks there. But we got Rockies opening today. Kelsey Wingard on the sideline. Yeah, there's the, uh, for those on the YouTube, there's the Cubs Pyrotechnic show, which is, uh, yeah, it's almost, it's almost, <laughs> why bother a little bit? But hey, that's, uh, that's fun. Uh, Rockies opening day. Everyone have a blast. Beautiful day in Colorado. I saw Kelsey's, Kelsey's parents were out support, supporting their daughter. So, like, I want that relationship with, yeah, I when right? she up. They have such a great relationship. A blast. That's why Kelsey's the best. That's why Kelsey's the best. Um, cards, pods. Yeah, that, that series kind of happened. Uh, cards got a couple pitching outings. That's what they were looking for last year. They've got an interesting little stretch coming out, surrounded by a couple off days, Miami, Philly. Um, and, yeah, it looked like the the Cubbies, I think they're, I think they're going on the road to the Dodgers. And someone else, I think no, Dodgers, the Dodgers are going. Dodgers are going to the Cubs. Dodgers to the Cubs, sorry, and then they hit the road for San Diego, Seattle. So let's uh, again, we're going to be finding out more about these all these teams in the coming days. Let's uh, let's jump to the American League. You, wait, I got one more thing sure. on the Cardinals, uh, Padres. There are a couple of fun things that happened. Uh, you talk about Higgy throwing out uh, two runners. Yeah, I believe the first one was. Who were the two runners? Beebs, can you look that up for me? Because I, I, the first one, whoever it was, went in sliding feet first. And I was like, oh, that guy's not a base dealer. Ooh. Like, you just don't. Mm. If you, I used to slide in feet first, and I wasn't a base dealer. I, so I think that can go two ways. I think you're right. I, I think for the non base dealer, base dealer. I do think if you're a legit base dealer, if you can do kind of the trade turner, just stay on the bag. I, I think you, there's a cool way to do it too. I believe the two guys are Donovan and Nolan Arenado. So that's Arenado, not Aaron, a base stealer. I think it was Arenado that went in feet first, and I was like, "This is." I know the feeling, bro. You're like, if I slide head first, am I going to get there? Do I have enough speed to get me there? If you're St. Louis, I don't know if that's your speed combo you want. <laughs> uh, but then also uh, at the end of the game, uh, uh, Roberto Suarez comes yeah. in. Or Robert Schwartz comes in, excuse me, and um, five outs, I think. Five out save, and after the game, there was the Musgrove quote: "Like it's really nice to have a guy willing to go out there and Woo! pitch more than one inning." Like a little shots fired at Josh Hader, 
Um, my first take on it was, I don't know if he really meant that or if you're just pumping up his boy for doing it. But it kind of like, when I'm really thinking about it, it is kind of like shots fired there. Yeah, we, you know, uh, Ryan Cohen is, he's, he's a part of our, we now have a resident Padres fan in the office. He's helping out with our socials. Kind of a hot boy, Ryan is. Uh, like a little, here and there. In like a weird way. Here and there. He's, he's got a type. Like in the way that Jack sure. Doyle. He's talks. a type. He's a type. Him and Jack Doyle are cousins. Um, yeah. You know, he, he had some comments about Hater, and I think Padres Nation felt it a little bit that, dude, I got, I got checked, uh, this offseason, you guys know if I get called out, I'd have that little defensive short guy mechanism for a second. They're like, um, you want to do this? And then, dude, Hader didn't, did not do one plus outings. Uh, and like, oh, wow. th- in my head, that's that was one of the biggest perks of Hader. Like, hey, if you need a grindy five out finish, who else would you want? And that kind of wasn't in his bag. So I don't, I don't know if that was free agency. I don't know if his. He felt his performance got hurt by it, but yeah, I mean that's a I'm, shot across the bow. I think I remember at, at one point it being a thing that he kind of asked not to do it because he felt like if he can just be a traditional closer, rack up some saves, that's what's going to get him paid. It did, and there was like people thinking, but he never said anything that like when he go when he gets his payday, maybe he'll go back to doing that uh, since money's money's got it's in the bank. But. Um, one more, one more Cardinals thing on those steals, the Arenado one with the bad slide, uh, Ollie Marmol might've done the rudest thing he's done as a manager. He challenged the play unsuccessfully. So they just had to sit there and watch him slide for a while. It's Arenado. Don't do that. Nolan, just pick the ball third, baby. Hit some homers. And here's the tag. Uh, Alexis Diaz with a five out save during the Nats. Uh, let's, uh. Let's jump over to some American League Baseball, huh? America, yep. Speaking of, a couple teams with Trev's fingerprints all over them. His Texas Rangers versus his Tampa Bay Rays. Yeah, Trev, yeah. Uh, Rangers, they take the bread games. How about it? Uh, Dane Dunning, a couple innings left, couple innings right. 6.13 6.13 earned <laughs> runs. Josh Young with a big game, but also an injury. I think he's going to miss a chunk of time. We don't love that. Uh, Adolis with a homer in that game. Led Zeflin and Isak Paredes the next day put in some big boy efforts. And then Nate Dog of Aldi makes it regulate. Seven inning shutout. Corey Seager homer. Yeah, that, that checks out. Rangers get their business done in the trop, by the way. Not always... An easy place to get it done over there. Uh, The Blue Jays and the Astros. Man, the Astros dominated 2.8 games, but they got two wins. Uh, The Blue Jays, they steal the middle game. Davis Schneider, Babe Ruth Schneider uh, takes one. Was that off a hater? Oh, boy, tough hater app, huh? Uh, Oh, yeah, and that first first episode, first game, Ronel Blanco with the no-hitter. Uh, welcome to the season, dude. Fun story there. We're going to talk about that. Uh, they won that game 10-0, and they took the final game 8-0. Man, my guy, the Basset Hound, has been getting banged up a little bit early on. Jordan Alvarez. Um, is our whole building shaking, BBD? Is that an earthquake? Whoa. Uh, we'll circle back on that. You feel that, right? Um, maybe we'll. building might be coming down. We'll check on that later. Chris Roses. Cleveland Guard Dogs. They take two out of three from Seattle. How do you like that? Uh, the Guard Dogs have been swinging the stick this season. Bo Naylor, uh, two for four. Brian Rocchio, sure, the bottom of the lineup, bringing the noise. And then J Ram Quan in that final game with some special pitching from Logan Allen and Shane Bieber. Uh, Mariners drop another series. Uh, Canzone homered in that first game. Julio Rodriguez made a couple catches. But guard dogs, that central hype train is rolling. But it stops rolling here for a little bit. The Baltimore Orioles, they go bread game. It's been a bread life. Um, A couple walk-offs from the birds. That top prospect middle infielder for the Orioles, Jordan Westberg, walk-off two-run home run. He's like your fourth Orioles top prospect. Um, and then your Orioles stud catcher with the walk-off in the final game, James McCann. So 
Uh, the birds come at you in different ways. Royals fans, some good news. Alec Marsh shoved in the, in the middle game. And Michael Garcia, along with obviously Bobby Witt. But Michael Garcia has been going off early on for them. Uh, Trev thinks this is a budding rivalry. Maybe we'll talk about that. Uh, probably not a budding rivalry. But how about the Sox, kid? They round off their West Coast road trip by sweeping the Oakland Athletics. They handled their bidness. That's all you ask. Uh, they blow them out in the first game, the second to uh, 11 innings in that middle game, and then a one nothing full pension piv. And the Sox bullpen. Hold on. It got, it got a little scary late. Uh, Chicken Strips was pitching well for Oakland. Uh, J.J. Blade and Langelier with some homers. But the Sox, how about it? An early West Coast trip to start the year. We saw some Trevor Story signs. Uh, Rafaela, the kid, is is making some highlight real plays for them. Jaron Duran, my goodness, he's all over the box score. Sox, they get the sweep and they're winning early on, and that's what happened in the American League. Yeah, we had an earthquake. Was that an earthquake? That's what everyone on Twitter's saying. That's nuts. I saw the camera shake. Dude, the building was shaking. I had a lot New of York texts when I went to Twitter and everyone said, whoa, New York City earthquake. Does maybe, New York have earthquakes? Like maybe normally. get a pulse Pretty check rare. from the office. See see the level of panic out there? Um, I'm, like, I, what? I want you to be safe, but like, if you like fell over or something and like something toppled behind you, that's kind of cool for our show. Dude, we were. I saw it. That's a little nutty, man. I don't know if I've felt that before. Maddie Mass is in the room now. Are, are we you... fracking in upstate New York or something? Are you okay, Maddie? How's the office? Can we recreate? Dude, it was like You can like when when this app comes out, you'll I think you'll see it shaking. Whoa. Um I kinda like hadn't seen that. Ju- also what hurt me, Justin Pennick was in our live stream lounge, which I can see out of the corner of my eye, and he did, like, a big guy bolt. Like, big guy doesn't like this. Mm-hmm. Um, Imagine you dying in that thanks. outfit. If I die in this fit. Uh, I am Aaron Boone's favorite person. That's good news. Dude, earthquake eclipse? They would know who you are because you have your monogram on your... I would be easy to identify. So <laughs> let's get away from that. Uh, <laughs> Trev, in the AL... Uh, Man, we gave this a little love in the midweek. We need to give it actually proper love now because we kind of didn't. Rono Blanco, no hitter. I know we, no hitters have been, they've been a little more prevalent. uh, That has taken a little bit of the punch out of them. But I'm not going to knock this dude, and he's got a cool story. uh, And the Astros in general, they kind of gave the Jays the business in this series. Um, So I'll, I'll I'll let you go on that. Yeah, first I I love that this was uh, Joe Espada's first managerial win was a was a no hitter. They had yeah. to really get it done for this guy. <laughs> I'm happy uh, for him there. Uh, but Ronald Blanco is just yeah, it's just a great story. Um, I think people probably have heard most of it by now because this did happen, you know, a little bit ago. But uh, this guy backstory with him um, was wasn't really gonna make. The team or even the roster get a couple injuries, you know, Verlander or Kidi. Um, so he ends up in the starting rotation. I think he just had a baby uh, a couple days before the season. Uh, so he, he's like kind of like riding that high, making the roster, mm. having a baby. And then all of a sudden you get here and the guy throws a no hitter on 105 pitches, almost has the Maddox, only walks mm. George Springer twice. That was the only base runners he allowed. And uh, just a masterful game. They were calling him. Ronel Cambio Blanco because you start throwing that change up a lot more this year. Uh, but this dude was an afterthought um, down there in the DR. Uh, he signed at 22 years old for $5,000 because a scout saw him when he was scouting Julio Rodriguez. Mm. I love those stories, right? Uh, one, he was practicing baseball during that time. He was also working at a car wash. Like, to make ends meet. I, I just, I love stories like this. And Chris Rose asked me like, what does this mean for him going forward? Like, what is what does a no hitter do for you? In Chris Rose career? asked you that? Of course. Of course. You <laughs> the worst, best questions ever. Um, I'll tell you what it does. It gives you opportunities, man. Yeah. Like he, like he's going to get an opportunity either to stay in the starting rotation 
um, for the Astros. You know, he's going to have a few more starts here, obviously. And then, you know, when the injuries uh, or the people come back from the injured list, like he'll have a spot because he's shown that he's been able to do it while making adjustments. Like he's, I like that he's made meaningful adjustments and like reaping the rewards of that. So, I mean, the guy was, it was awesome to see and I'm happy for him. And 22 years old signing, that's like unheard of in the DR. You're talking about guys that are typically signing much younger, 16 to 18 years old. This guy has just kind of like paid his dues. And all of a sudden now we're getting the no hitter. And man, like, look, he's in, he's in the record books forever now. And I love that for him. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I was just, I was on a little bit of a, you know, Houston's rotation's not what it looks like. We're we're always wondering. Teams can't last forever. <laughs> it's never happened. Um, and here's here's Rono Blanco. Uh, here's your note. How many times have we said that about them? Like <laughs> all of a sudden, Framber Valdez just showed up and was like, "Oh, here here's yeah. their ace for the foreseeable future." Like it's crazy, dude. Yeah. Um, Jordan goes off in the final game. Uh, oh, Kyle God. Tucker's been going these are your Houston Astros I I guess is there uh any Blue Jays commentary that you you want to add they're they're currently three and four I mean they just you know they just played Houston um the offense has been struggling a little bit I I don't know I guess is again still very early in the season is there anything anything you're seeing or concerning I mean, yeah, the offense struggled struggled this series for sure, and uh, I mean, it's I don't think that's going to be the case over 162. A lot of people can bat me on that. I'm like, I think the Blue Jays' offense is uh, has a potential to be pretty damn good. And some people say, well, have you been watching the games? And I'll say to them, it's still very early on in the season. Uh, I do love that they snuck out one win. That means something. Mm. Uh, Schneider uh, with the two run jack off a of hater, and it's. Before that at bat, it was Justin Turner. But I was watching this live, and Justin Turner was 0 for 10 with 5 Ks against Hader. And he worked to walk. I don't even think he swung the bat <laughs> in that at bat. I think it was oh, like God. a five pitch walk. And he gets on, and Hader hangs a slider to Schneider, and he hit the shit out of it, man. Babe Schneider. We so didn't... look. I mean, look. It's it's a bad series for them. Is there a you baseball shut out twice? Term? You get no hit, but you salvage one game and. I think you just keep it rolling. Is there a baseball term for if you get a walk without swinging the bat? Because I feel like we need that. Just all like takes. The, the pedestrian Free walk. Pass? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I like it. Um, yeah, I don't know. Blue Jays. I guess here's what I'll say. For the formula, one of the things I loved about the Blue Jays was their bullpen, and two of the guys on the back end are Romano and Swanson, and they're both currently on the I.L., um, so that has changed their bullpen depth chart a lot. Uh, they got a hit and, and, you know, after seven games, I'm not saying the blue Jays are going to hit this this year. Cause I think they're gonna, uh, but that lineup does get a little thin on the back end. So, uh, I don't know. Let's see blue Jays at the Yankees. I'll, I'll get a look at them in person today, Seattle. And then, uh, let's check in. They, they get a little Colorado at home, uh, in about a week and a half. So that can, uh, that can help the stats a little bit. How about how about Justin Turner casually hitting 318, 423, 636 for a one daughter? Who would have thought? Just Everybody. Hit, stays hitting. Stays hitting. Um, Trev, I, the other... Uh, well, we got a couple topics in the AL. I guess Sox pitching. I, I think uh, we might be talking about that a little later on. And there is... There's the slightest Oakland A's caveat here, but... Boston, that's the question, and they're... Uh, Are we talking about the pitching later or now? Let's talk about it later then. Okay. Um, do you want any A's... Well, do you want any A's Sacramento talk? I'm so confused on when we're talking about the Boston Red Sox pitching. Are you talking about it? Not later. Okay, then let's talk about it now. Okay. <laughs> I was like, what are I you thought, talking about? Unless I, it's your, I didn't unless think it's your you award. Were. I don't know. No, 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 no. Oh. No. Well, dude... We both need to just, I think at least I do, need to say hey, I'm sorry Okay. to the Boston Red Sox pitching staff. Or like, I don't I don't know what You're to say. You're an Andrew like, Bailey I, I guy I, now, right? Well, I didn't, look, I think going into the season, you kind of looked at the rotation. You got guys that definitely have uh, stuff and, and, and could get the job done. But 
I think there was a lot of question marks in it. You know, like, yeah, Bayo has been a hell of a starter in his young career, but like, you know, we haven't seen him do it too often and we've seen ups and downs from him. Same with Pavetta. We've seen this guy dominate. We've seen him get blown up. Like there's, there's a lot of, there was a lot of variation, I believe, in how, you know, this season can go with their starting rotation. You got, you know, a guy like Whitlock who's just been, you know, back and forth between the pen and starting. You know, I actually like Cutter Crawford watching him pitch. It's like kind of my nightmare the way he throws the ball. It's like all turkey jerky. Yeah. Um, but they've dominated this season. I mean, they've been incredible. Uh, I believe this is starting pitchers and relievers combined. They have a 1-5-4 ERA. I mean, they're they're third in starting pitcher ERA and they're first in bullpen ERA right now. You're Boston Red Sox, man. They have a, f- I mean, they are they are crushing it. And so so you know, how is this getting done? Is this just uh, a byproduct of who they're playing? Is it just an early season thing? Well, I think you can maybe point to some of that, but they do have a new pitching coach, a guy coming over from the Giants who really revamped the Giants mm. pitching staff, Andrew Bailey. Uh, kind of like widely renowned as one of the, the new kind of stars in that department. And he's got some interesting like kind of quotes and, and ideas about how to approach uh, the game of pitching. He's He had an interview and he was talking about like relating pitching to boxing. He said, a lot of people will say your, your pitcher's best pitch is their uh, like a well-located fastball. He goes, I don't know, necessarily know if that's true. He's equating a fastball to a jab. Okay. And jabs have to be well located, well placed to do damage. He goes to win a fight. You need haymakers. You need to throw your best pitch. And he's saying the haymakers are more like off speed pitches. Okay. Like your best off speed pitch. So it's using your fastball tactically to set up your haymakers, essentially. Now, I guess that's all kind of just like fun quote stuff to say, hey, let's throw her off speed a little bit more often because hitters have. Uh, problem with off speed, but like it's really made a difference in the pitching staff. Like for instance, um, with Nick Pavetta, last year he threw his four seamer fifty point six percent of the time. This year he's throwing it thirty two point eight percent of the time because he's brought his sweeper up from five point four percent to twenty six point four percent, and his cutter from seventeen or from seven point eight percent to twenty point seven percent. So like. We're using the pitches more tactically. So, yeah, you can say he's just throwing more off-speed pitches, but they have a plan behind it. It's not just like when Sonny Gray came over to the Yankees and they said, Mm. throw your slider more, your curveball more. No, this is like, hey, let's use it. Let's sequence it into it. It's not just throw it all the time. Let's, like, figure out ways to do it. Uh, So you have that example. Cutter Crawford, who I talked about before, four-seamer last year, 39.1%. Four-seamer this year, 23.8%. Uh, he barely threw a sweeper at all last year, 6.8%. He's thrown that the most of any pitch, 36.9%. So the sweeper's been introduced. And like this whole jab haymaker thing, I kind of like the analogy, to be honest with you. And it's really proven to be fruitful for the Red Sox early on in the season. And I always say this, like you can have you can have improvements come and and sometimes that's just baseball and you're just in a good spot and things are lining up for you. But when you're making meaningful adjustments and those improvements come, those improvements come, I think there's more staying power in that. So Andrew Bailey's maybe going to have all of us eating crow this season. Maybe this, maybe full pension piv is finally going to win that Cy Young. Uh, You know, like they, they have the arm talent there. Now, if they're like using their pitches differently and correctly, like this this could be something to monitor. Best K to walk ratio in the bigs right now. Um, hey, if the Sox can pitch, holy cow, the AL East. Uh, holy cow. Yeah, they, they got some, uh, you know, like stories healthy. So he's playing a better shortstop. Uh, uh, Sadon in, in, in center field. Uh, has made some really good catches. That helps yeah. your pitching staff too. Like they got a guy that can go out there and get it. Like Alex Cora is calling for a Gold Glove for this guy. Like they're we're talking it up here, people. The Red Sox are hot in the streets. Rafaela Duran and and uh, O'Neill in the outfield. I talked about that a little bit. And their offense hasn't gone yet. Like their their offense has been Duran, um, and uh, O'Neill basically. So 
Sox kid. Tristan Casas is still out there just sunbathing, and I just I like part of me wants to hate on it, but I just can't. This guy's just like I'll do whatever I want to do. I'm gonna go out and lay and soak in the sun and ground my feet on your grass. Play good, things take care of themselves. Uh, Orioles have a new home run handlebar from your guy Cole Irvin. Uh, do you need to look into that? Is that is that you? That's what do you mean? Is that me? I mean, he's your guy. He's your fishing buddy. I mean, I didn't tell Cole Irvin to get handlebars and to do the celebration. They always got something nutty up there. They're having fun in Baltimore. It's a bunch of freaking kids balling out, dude. They're yeah. all like, we're all going to get paid very soon. New ownership. Let's go. Let's, let's just have some fun. Their minor leagues are balling out. They're hitting big oh boy gosh. runs. Don't uh, talk about minor leagues. Couple uh, couple walk-offs and, uh, hey, Royals He's not re- Jackson Holiday and Paul Skeens are not ready for the big leagues, people. <laughs> Royals fans. They're not. You, you got another Cole Reagan's nasty start, and uh, I don't know. I, Will Smith kind of blew. I, hey, you were in all these games, Royals. You were in all these games. Uh, Trev, we kind of got a juicy IL, so let's let's get let's get through that as Shout well. Shout out Guardians for banging the ball around the park, though. There will be some guard dog love coming. Okay. They are banging the ball. Speaking of banging the ball, how about your New York Yankees? They take two out of three from the Snakes. Red games. Uh, Luis Hill, the young pitcher. Got a fun little fastball. He has a nice first start. Anthony Volpe, four for four. Are you kidding me? He looks like Jeets. Uh, Judge breaks out of his slump with a homer in the last game. Zach Gallant was nasty in that middle game. Uh, and they got some nice offensive performances. Christian Walker, Blaze Alexander. Extra innings in the last one, 11. Couple runs scored in each inning. Got kind of ugly. Game ended with Scott McGuff hitting. That's right, reliever Scott McGuff had the last at bat in that final game. Uh, the Los Angeles Angels, they sweep the Marlins. Okay, Halos, stay involved. Why not? Uh, Tyler Anderson with a big start. Mike Trout, two homer game, and the longest homer of the season. Holy cow, he pissed on one. And so did Taylor Ward in that last game. How about your guy Miguel Sano uh, with a couple hits? Uh, a couple runs scored in the office. Marlins, uh-oh. And even worse news off the field, Yuri Perez, TJ, see ya. How's my side? Young draft. They don't care about that. They care about getting a win. Detroit Tigers and the New York Mets, a lot of rain. Uh, they end up getting a doubleheader in Thursday. Uh, and a couple extra inning games, Tigers Blow them out in extras the first game. Things are getting metsy, but they get a win in that last game. Jose Budo? Budo? I think Budo. Yeah, I bet. Uh, Pete Alonzo homers to get it done. Tigers, they take two out of three. Gio Urshela, the most happy fellow. Reese Olsen uh, twirling the pill in that first game. Chicago White Sox and Braves, they played two. Again, rain. Braves blew them out in the first one. White Sox. Find some nice pitching you might hear about. Uh, They get the win in the second one. Uh, And then Brewers and Twins, they also split two. Twins and the Brewers' perfect season. Uh, Louis Varland, your guy guy, Trev. Uh, Bryce Terang has been going nuts. We talked about him in the midweek. Alex Kirilov, four-hit day. Ryan Jeffers, a four-RBI day in that last one. Chirillo, my God, the young man, he gets gets his homer on the board. Uh... Two game splits, you know we hate that. So that's what happened in the IL. Nice, Poppy. What are you drinking there? What kind of latte you got? Uh, I've been on a, I've been mixing in Dunkin' a little more recently. Um, I didn't really. I had some old Dunkin' points racked up, so I've been drinking Dunkin' for free, uh, which is a nice way to drink any coffee. And I, uh, I added an espresso shot. And I normally been going medium, but I got the large today because I'm going to the big house, going to the stadium. I gotta be on, you know. I'm a man of the people. I don't. I heard Paul O'Neill's got the first pitch, but he gets caught up in traffic. Who I'm guess there. Earthquake. Earthquake. Uh, well, you know, I have media credentials, Trev. So you said in the press box. I'm just gonna cover the game. Get my tweets out. Um, Trev, I I don't think Yank Snakes has a big topic. Yanks have just been hot. Uh, we we kind of covered that early on, and and people. Let me ask you a question on that though, because we Please. did get a Scott McGuff the Storielli uh, Bowl. 
people are calling that. Okay. You got him uh, batting there. And it's because all these things happened. Cattell Marte shifts from DH to second base. So they lose their DH. Let me ask you this. Why not just put a pitcher in the outfield and not lose your DH? Mm. I guess does that mean anything? I, I, I wasn't watching this game. I don't know where they were at in the lineup. But to me, that makes more sense than giving it's up your DH. It's an interesting question. If you have a pitcher that... You think can you you more likely have a pitcher that can track fly balls uh, than can, can get hit. a hit? Uh, yeah, I don't I know. That there, guy, I, guess, I guess that guy will have to hit eventually there, too. Yeah, I don't know where in the li- lineup they are. It was it was sixth in the lineup, and it got to that spot, which is kind of tough. But also, I don't know if if you got a fly ball to the outfield and your pitcher looks bad or they get hurt, you're getting questioned either way. Um, and I don't know. I, Scott, Here's one thing I know about ca- pitchers: they they can catch fly balls. That's right? what they've done That's part of their for a game. long time. They shag BP, or they I mean they used to shag BP. A lot of teams don't even. Well, whoever's most do flexible. You know what it is though, dude. And I I know you're not gonna like this, but taking a pitcher from off the bench, like on an off day, to you're gonna be playing the outfield. Like, have they stretched? Like, what? I don't know. You're just you're playing a little mm. bit of a dangerous game there. Either way. And, and it's soft. So soft. It's soft. I know it's soft. For Also, my question is, Scott McGuff a hitter like in college or something? So like, Why we, is it him? We were researching live. So he was in the game pitching, and then we were doing like, a, ooh, who are they going to make hit? Um, and then I think someone found out he was like 5 for 13 in the minor, so it was kind of a perfect storm. Trev, the hitter in you, if you saw the last pitch he was rung up on, I felt bad for Scott McGuff in the story Ellie Bowl. Wasn't necessarily given a shot. No. He fouled, the, he fouled one off. That's tough. Another th- thing, just part of that decision, like Marte goes to short. I think they didn't have like short stops and maybe they're prioritizing that. Having a real guy at short. Okay. Then, there was an injury. Yeah. So it, you know, hands got forced a little bit. And Torrey was also, out of the game. Also already. after the game, we missed this at Yankee fans, but there was a base open for judges double. Um, and they were oh. like, hey, Tori, did you, should you have walked Judge? He's like, yeah, probably. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I've, I've been thinking about that one. Um, Marlins done or finished, you were saying? Dude, it's 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 actually depressing. Like, go look at their baseball reference page. It's actually very depressing to look at, which I'm going to pull it up now because I want to I depress myself. One sec. Oh. Uh, I think you need myself. to give credit to the Angels uh, a little bit here for what they were able to do. Like, they've had some really good uh, starting pitching um, come out. And I talked to Chris Rose about this a little bit. You know, after the second game of the season, they were 0-2. And Ron Washington, you know what he did? He called a little team meeting. Mm. And so we're putting a squash to this right now, guys. Get over the two games. Let's go on. They've won four games since. They beat the Birds. Reed Detmers uh, had a great start against the Orioles, and then they went into Miami and, and, and swept them. But if you're looking at Miami, they have oh my God, one person um, with an OPS plus over 85. Hey. Offense ain't been going. As Jake Berger been was decimated. Yes, Jake Berger. They've been decimated uh, by starting pitching injuries. The Yuri Perez news absolutely sucks, dude, because they've been very careful with him, and they, they've tried innings limits and all these different things, and it's still happening. I don't know what the solution is there for the TJ stuff, but, uh, I mean, they're just, like, in a bad spot right now. I you can't lose four starters out of your rotation and have your offense go cold and, and think you're going to win games. I mean, that's the, the recipe for 0 and 8. Plus, you got too much talk in the media, man. Like, let's just stop talking to the media or like just go back to cliche stuff and get find your business, get it right. Okay. Like, we, like things are just not good down there in South Florida. Yeah. Like, like, I don't know. We, we do this a lot. If, if the Marlins were winning, and they were talking to the media, we wouldn't care. It, it just does feel weird when I would losing. care. The stuff that they're talking about yeah. is stupid. It's hey, they uh figure it out quick because two gamer at St. Louis, I don't know, that is what it is, at the stadium for three, and then they host the Braves. So like I don't know. If you don't start figuring something out quick, we talk about having the good month and how that can anchor your season. The bad month can I don't know. 
I don't know. This, okay. this was a playoff team last year. This They've was- lost a lot since since that. Um, shout out the Angels, though. Your guy Taylor Ward, who you pointed yeah. out, that's kind of like your guy that could change things in that Angels lineup. He's been going off. Obviously, Mike Trout's been going off. Logan O'Hoppy's doing his thing. Um, but, yeah, they've been, they've been getting some good pitching performances, man. Kind of excited about these Halos. Man, that I said they could be in contention. I said they can be in contention this year, and I actually meant it. Um, yeah. There's some stats out there that aren't pretty, but here they are. I think they're in first place. Your in the first Alliance. place, Los Angeles Angels, and they're teeing it up against the Boston Red Sox, baby. So let's one of those te- kind of fun series. one of those teams is going to be feeling pretty damn good in a couple days, um, which both uh, I think fan bases were skeptical. Uh, we've done a lot of central. Uh, Tigers and Brewers are hot. I, I don't know if any of those are really topical, and I think we're highlighting I'm some guys. S- I'm sick up. of the Tigers already. They're too good. You're over it. Nice. Yeah, they're too good. I don't want them challenging my twins for the central. You see, I know we can do this almost every year and every day, but did you see the Torkelson checks oh. check swing that uh they got called? Angel, my guy? Your guy Angel. That's tough. That's infuriating, man. It's tough. But the Tigers have been a really fun watch. Um the bullpen's absolutely nasty. Um, Scooble's been nasty. Mm. Like the, everything we kind of oh, here it is. I I was shocked. Like I I knew it was gonna be bad because it's Angel Hernandez, but oh, Trev, that's Wait, did not you say even... it was a foul ball or a swing? They said it was a swing. Sheesh, bro. I mean, the bat pointed at you, dude. The bat doesn't come over the plate. That's insane. Shouldn't it? That's insane. Oh, yeah. I mean, Tigers had the sweep. Mm. And I don't know how Pete Alonso hit that ball. Did you see the pitch? New York Mets, they, baby. We're back. It's insane what he was able to do. Um, yeah, Tigers are scaring me a little bit. I got to be honest with you. Okay. Or no, bullpen ERA is 0. 0.59 or something at one point. Um, I'm I'm glad the Mets got their dub. I know people. It's it's obviously an easy joke. I pull the joke sometimes. Mets went 13 innings without a hit. It was awful weather. The double header, so the stands were empty. Now uh, let's and then I jolly with a little optimism on on Twitter, and then I think you kind of came back at them. So I don't. I said I, get back in the box. Yeah, I was texting Jolly. I said, are you still in that box? Because you should be after yeah. they lost the first game. How about like they had a a combined no hitter through what? In that last game, like almost eight innings, seven innings. My Mets went thirteen uh, without a hit. Yeah, across a couple games, and then uh, the the no hitter in the second game was broken up in the eighth. In the eighth, right? Okay. Did you see the hit? It was Bader like blooped one in to left field. Mark That's Canna. Sweet. Mark Canna's like, getting some still a Met, right? getting some still a Met allegations. No, stop, <laughs> oh. stop! Absolutely not. Mark Canna feels no, no affiliation to any people team. People joking because he was a beloved Met affiliated to himself, but I think you got to die for that ball. Just even if it's just a show dive, <laughs> but maybe he was just trying to keep it in front of him because of the score. I don't know. Mark Cannon. We'll reach out. Wonder if, wonder if there's like a cop between weird bad first step. I don't know. Okay. And uh, the twins got to start hitting the ball. Brewers central Trev. No, it's essential. How about Nutrafol? 80% of men will experience hair thinning in their lifetime. Normal, but it doesn't have to be your fate. And the big thing, fellas, is getting ahead of it before you get behind. Um, Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement brand with over 1 million people seeing thicker, stronger, faster growing hair. Also, um, it's loved by women. Maybe, you know. Mother's Day coming up, get the hair going. I don't, you know, I don't know. But Nutrafol can help. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month of subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men. Enter promo code TALKBASE. TALKBASE. Nutrafol.com slash men. Code TALKBASE. You get... What is it? $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping. Link in the description. Go check it out while we check out Standout, Standout Performances. performances. Trav, so we, going first? You go first. 
Okay, I like that. I went first last time. That's better. Um, I am giving some love to Seiya Suzuki. Uh, Seiya had a couple big days at the office. Uh, Wednesday, he was three for five, a homer, four RBI. Uh, six for 12, uh, two homers, six RBI in the series versus Colorado. And I know I, I've been throwing up Colorado uh, asterisk myself, but... Uh, I'm more so. I just wanted to highlight Saya because Trev, we've we've done a lot on international players. We talked about them in the midweek, and then Saya Suzuki. You know, when the baseball season's going on, you you get these tidbits that kind of get stuck in your head. Remember, Saya got like half benched for a week last year. Like, yes. just the Cubs lineup was deep. They had a bunch of outfielders, and they couldn't find a spot for Saya. I think there was an injury or something happened a week later. Seiya ended up back in the lineup, and he went nuts. That Seiya Suzuki last year, 138 games, had a 285 batting average, a 357 on base, and an 842 OPS. Last season, that's a full sample size. He took a step up from his rookie year to that, and he's been balling this year that I saw a couple Cubs people putting out, and it's one of my favorite phrases because it's a phrase that gets ruined if you use it too much. But is Seiya Suzuki, Seiya Suzuki one of the most underrated players in the game? And he's off to a hot start. 972 OPS on the season, obviously early. But like we talked about with these international guys, maybe they need a little more credit. Maybe it's not, are they clicking or are they not clicking? Seiya, you know, career 121 OPS plus since he's been in the show. Uh so Seiya Suzuki and part of these NL Central have more talent than maybe we're thinking. Uh, he's been balling to start this young season, and I want to highlight that for for the Cubbies while I'm wearing a Reds jersey and a Yankees hat. I love that. Yeah. Good for you. Thank you. You're just a man who uh, wears many hats. Yeah. Does that make any sense? Yeah. I'm a- no, you know, I, I, I like watching Seiya play. I like watching him hit, and I do believe – I don't know about the, the most underrated player – I don't. I don't know about that. I feel like we. He gets plenty of love. You know, sometimes you get overshadowed with the. You know, the a couple international. You know, especially the guys coming over from Japan. You know, this year Yamamoto. A lot of talk about him, but Say is a huge part of what the Cubs are trying to do. Yeah, like right in the middle of the lineup, doing his thing. And you're right, man. Like, one twenty one OPS plus is nothing to sneeze at in the major leagues. No, and if he's you know some. We talk about players getting exposed or seen, and uh, other times players get better. And if he's getting, he's getting better. better yeah. Sheesh. Yeah. Uh, where yeah. are you going? Uh, the on base percentage is something that I like to look at. You know, uh, with a guy who, uh, you know, first couple years in the big leagues. You know, what are you going to do there? Uh, three thirty six, three fifty seven last year, three seventy nine right now. I think that's the best indicator of are you actually getting better. Uh, your plate discipline's getting better. You're 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 getting the pitches in the zone. You're getting your pitches that hit more often, and the slugging has gone up too. I mean, he is like literally getting better in all of the categories. That's a good thing. That's nice to see if you're a Cubs fan because he's locked up until when to 2028. Yeah, they gave him a contract. Listed at 511, no chance, right? Mm. You're listed at 511. I want to know because Se- I mean, say is pretty. Like yeah, but if you're, just, if you're 5'11. actually 5'11, you put six foot. I'll send Hap the text. Yeah. How tall is Saya? Hey, Happer. Saya listed 5'11. 5'11. True. Thoughts? Thoughts. Okay. What do you got, Trev? My standout performer is a guy uh, who got drafted in 2020 and made his major league debut in 2020, which is always fucking crazy to me because I spent a lot of time in the minor leagues. Uh, Garrett Crochet yeah. uh, against the Bravo. Seven innings pitch, three hits, one earned run, eight Ks, one walk. Now he's had two starts this year. Uh, the first one uh, against the Detroit Tigers, he went six innings pitched with one and run, eight strikeouts. So he's he has back-to-back starts. He's got 13 innings pitched on the year, 16 Ks, one walk, and he's only given up two earned runs. And against like, you know, the Tigers offense hasn't been great to start the year, um, but they're not like a, they're not the Rockies. Yeah. But then to do it against the Braves is a whole different thing. So I think it's cool. Like 
He wanted to be a starter. Chris Getz, you know, was like, all right, open-minded enough to say, let's do it. Let's approach this offseason. Like, let's build you up. Let's see if you can be a starter. And now here he is looking like an ace. Like that's that's just that's nice to find. And and are we going to be seeing this more often with guys with high end arms? We're seeing Jordan Hicks do it and having success with the Giants. Um, usually it's kind of like the other way. Like, hey man, like you didn't really work out as a reliever or a starter, go to the bullpen. Uh, it's really not often we see guys, especially with established bullpen arms. This guy's been in the bullpen for a couple of years. Hicks has been in the bullpen for a couple of years. Go back to being a starter. Uh, I think that's very unique, and he's been able to do it. Um, he hasn't necessarily changed much of the pitch usage. I think he did add a cutter in, um, but he's just kind of that guy. I mean, he's had the, all the arm talent in the world. Now he's just stretched out, and now it has me thinking, like, who else is going to do this? There are a lot of guys that throw cheese in these pens, and they're nasty. Like, you know, I talked to um, to Chris Archer before uh, one of the – Dodger games. I saw him down the field. He's he's like kind of like a roving instructor with the with the Dodgers right now. And we're talking about Jordan Hicks. And he's like, man, what a genius contract for the Giants to do this with Hicks. So I believe he's making like something like eleven million dollars a year average. And he goes, think about it. Upside here, he's a he's a two starter. You know, like a, a top end rotation starter. You kind of said you for, that. He's not to flex. Uh, slight flex. You kind of said that like Archer. That's how yeah. Archer talks. He goes, you know, think about this. Upside? Yeah, you're star, right. Two star. I think I might have just like quoted him verbatim. Yeah. I don't know. Love me some Arch. Um, so upside is he's a two starter and you have him at $11 million a year. A worst case, you send him back to the bullpen. He's a high leverage reliever making $11 million a year. Yeah. Like kind of like... Are teams going to be following this model a little bit more? Like, why not? Earthquake. What happened? They just they did, just they did one of those like emergency alert happened. phone things oh, about the earthquake okay. from 30 minutes ago, which I don't, who's that helping? I don't, um, I don't know they do that for earthquakes. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if we want to mark it down for a midweek episode or something, but I, I've been changing my thoughts just on the whole starting pitching world. And I know that was a big topic and it's how do we get back to that? And it's not fully flushed out, but um, I don't know, man. Like you mentioned Jordan Hicks. When you see Garrett Crochet doing this, it's like, it kind of feels like we've been giving up on guys too early to be starters because going to the bullpen is also a win, just like you laid out with Jordan Hicks. Like, hey, if you go out and you get outs there, you can make a fine career of that. But um, I don't know. Starting pitchers are still – that's the ticket. That's what, that's what gets people in the ballpark. So I don't know. We are going to be – this is what my, my, uh, my look into my crystal ball into the future, okay? okay. Please. Everyone's going to be the same. There's not going to be starters. There's not going to be relievers. You're just a pitcher. You're a multi-inning pitcher. Maybe we have the rare occasion. I'm talking maybe like, you know, five, six years in the future. I think teams are going to start thinking like this is what I'm saying. Everyone's just a multi-inning pitcher. Yes. Some guys may prove to be, you know, a little bit longer than that. You know, but I think those guys are kind of a dying breed. Uh, so maybe we'll have some guys still trying to go six, seven. But I think we're going to have a whole team full of guys that can go three or four innings pitched. And then maybe we have a couple high-end relievers still to come shut the game down at the end. Because I do believe that still is a different animal. I believe ending the game is still different. And talk to any pitcher, they'll tell you the same damn thing. So my belief is we're going to see more of those guys where it's just like, you're just a pitcher. Like starting pitching is kind of going to be out. And we'll have like eight guys in the, in our uh, eight of the 13 that can just throw like three or four innings. Yeah. I, I've messed around with this like theory. Um, I think you're still going to need starting pitchers that, that can go cause that can reset everyone. Like that's one of the, that's kind of one of the key still things. Two guys. Um, but yeah, I think, I think bullpen, if you're an Edwin Diaz or a hater and you're going to give us that one inning, we can do that. If you're everyone else, you better be able to go three. And I, it's kind of funny, like, all the analytics and stuff we had to baseball, that's kind of what baseball was. Like, it was a closer and a setup man. And then if you were someone else in the bullpen, it was like, be ready to throw. 
Um, and all the starters were ready to go a buck ten and in nine innings if you need it. So I I think it's funny that we're probably gonna progress back to that with all the numbers and nerds that got involved in the game. Um, I think we're sorry, nerds. I, I feel like starters were trying to go seven eight innings every single time they were on the mound back in the day. We're I think we're not getting going back to that. I think everyone is going to want to pitch three. Three innings, three or four innings, and then teams mm-hmm. can. It's, it's a way for teams to mitigate costs right. too. It's like right, like it all kind of like makes sense. Like in the future, this is the way we're going to go, and maybe, and maybe that's the path to like not having so many arm injuries. I don't know, man. It's a discussion. Just thinking out loud here. Maybe, okay? it, maybe another one for another day. Hey, oh, why didn't Zach Gallen shoved against the Yank? Kirilov went nuts. Zach Gallen is the most underrated player in baseball. Him okay. and Jose Ramirez share that title, okay? Austin, hi, why aren't you talking about Austin Riley and Jaron Duran? Hey, there's a lot of stud players that had big weekends, but talking baseball is maybe most electric part of each episode. Dirt nasties on fuego. That means I'm on fire, baby. Like Waco. <laughs> Trev? Ah, that's hilarious. All right, we're going to start with this series. You spoke about this man, this big, beautiful man, Jorge Soler. Against the Dodgers, he went 5 for 10, a double, two homers, three ribbies uh, for a 500 batting average. That's what 5 for 10 is. Mm. Nice nice math there. Uh, Jaron Duran, 9 for 14. That boy, fella. Two ribbies, three runs, four stolen bases. Okay. Jake, what's 9 for 14? What's the average there? Just do it in your head. It's also 500. Yep, crushed it. Seven fifty. Uh, Brendan Donovan, six for ten, a double, a homer, two ribbies, five runs, two hit by pitches for a six hundred average in the series for the week. This is the one you want to be on, people. Bobby Witt, our freaking guy. My you asked who was going. I was DMing on Instagram. It's Bobby Witt all yeah. the time, and he responds to me. So thank you, Bobby, for making an old man feel cool. Uh, Twelve for twenty-eight, five doubles. <laughs> A triple, two homers, uh, only two ribbies, two stolen bases, three walks. Garrett Crochet, we just talked about him, man. 13 innings pitched, one walk, 16 Ks. How about this guy? Who is who is this guy? Mm. New York Yankees reliever Ian Hamilton? Mm. Is he good? Might be asked to do a lot more because Johnny Luizaga just got hurt. But, yeah, he's uh Five and two-thirds and three games pitched, only one hit, seven Ks, no walks. Me likey that, Poppy. When you get the Ks and no walks, that gets my thing moving a little bit. Speaking of moving, Cade Smith, Cleveland reliever, mm. four and a third innings pitched, one hit, nine Ks, and only two walks. And that, my friends, is who is in Fuego. I love it, Trev. Good, good for Solaire getting out of the gates and Bobby Witt Jr. Man, we during that Saya talk we talked about getting better. Bobby Witt last year, thirty homers, forty nine stolen bases, an eight one three OPS, and a big second half. Picture all the picture those numbers ticking up. I mean, that's <laughs> that's thirty five homers, sixty steals. Like I, you know, we're we're getting into Acuna territory with a shortstop. So. Uh yeah, I'll uh I'll drink that Bobby with Kool-Aid. I'm glad he responds to you, man. That's uh that's nice. That's nice. It is nice. Um Slump Watch not happening yet. Not sure if it's gonna happen at all. I did see some big O for numbers out there. I won't throw anyone under the bus, Chris Bryant. Um Rendon. Rendon. Anthony Rendon. Rendon's been getting cooked. Um What's going on with this guy? Just, I try to defend I, him I in the know. off season. I don't know. I thought Ron Washington was gonna light a fire. There's <laughs> anti fire. Some of the like Chanuel was in college since his last hit or something. <sighs> um the non, the non- I think his last hit was July fourth. Is that is that true? America. I missed a lot of time. Mm-hmm. I do think the IL is an unfortunately an important segment, even though it's my least imp- my least favorite segment so far. Um, Alec Thomas for my snakes. He gets banged up. Corbin Carroll sliding over to center. Josh Young, like I mentioned, uh, big piece missing uh, on the hot corner for Texas. Jason Hayward for the Dodgers. Uh, some see some other veterans getting playing time for them. Both McGills, yeah. Tyler yeah. and Trevor McGill. 
That's tough, man. Mom, Mom McGill's not happy about Dude, that. Dude, that, oh, their cool. family is bummed. Uh, Matt Carpenter, we don't like that. And Victor Robles uh, for the Natinals. Uh, so that's that's kind of, and like I just mentioned, Jonathan Luizaga, Yankees set up man this morning. He's a uh, right flexor strain, which could mean could mean a chunk of time. Which yeah. you're, you're, and bo- you see the Boone quotes on it. He said he's significant very concerns. Yeah. Concerned, thinks it's significant. That's that's usually Yankee, the MRI. Yankee code for a bad time. Immediate sixty day. I will tell you, our talking baseball code for a good time. Oh boy. I mean, Rockies opening day, Kelsey Winger Awards, and what could be better than MLB nine innings? You're watching baseball. You might as well be playing baseball in the palm of your hands with MLB nine innings. Wide variety of game modes, from league mode to live PvP, over 2,000 player cards to collect. You know they got some of the historical guys in there. Bob Gibson, hello. Eddie Murray, switch hitting Dennis Eckersley and Mo Rivera to shut down the game if you need that true nine innings. Uh, Download and play MLB Nine Innings 24 today with the link in the description. Uh, Give it a look. If you like baseball, which you're currently listening to Talking Baseball, there's a chance that you're going to like MLB Nine Innings. So go download it today. I will bat leadoff as Trev dished that off before, and uh, you were out of the screen for a second, so I'm going to do my award. Fine. Um, I was ready, though. I'm going to do the waiting for the next single award. Um, it's going to a pitcher, but it's encompassing some hitting that was referenced earlier as well. And because I'm waiting for the next single for my guy, Justin Bieber. Like, when's the next track? I need the next Bieber summer hit. Meanwhile, Shane Bieber, two games started, 12 innings pitched. How's zero earned runs in Trev? I had to double check this. 20 strikeouts from Shane Bieber. And just a reminder, what's something we love here at Talking Baseball? We loves a contract year. Oh, walk year, baby. So Shane Bieber, Cy Young in the bag. And he's come out two starts, zero earned runs, 20 Ks, and 12 innings. So I wanted to highlight the Biebs because, you know, he can be a star in this game and one of the best pitchers. And we talk about Cleveland pitching a lot. We love a contract year. And he's been waiting on the bench because he's been watching his team hit some singles and a lot more. The guard dogs have been bopping, Trev. Is there a little A's asterisk? Yes. Does there need to be an A's Mariners asterisk? Because the Guardians and the Red Sox, who have played both of those teams, have been lighting it up from both sides of the ball. I don't care about that yet. Uh, I care about what you've been doing. And the Cleveland Guardians, third in runs so far this year. How about that? Uh, So a shout-out to Shane Bieber highlighting him. And Guard Dogs fans, I did want to give you some love. Quan Jimenez and Ramirez have been going off. That's the top of their lineup. And then they've been getting some games from different guys. Uh, Tyler Freeman filling in. Rocchio. Bo Naylor. Uh, so the Guard Dogs, who had a really tough offensive season last year, and then they shut down all their pitchers. Shane Bieber is back and shoving. That's a guy we thought about. they were going to trade a lot uh, because of his contract year. Uh, so the guard dogs getting it done on both sides and give me that just when that Justin Bieber summer jam hits, man. I mean, that's just different. He's just that guy. Can't wait for summer. I, I right. got a nice tan. The body's like not exactly where I want it to be, mm-hmm. but I have been hitting the gym a couple days in a row. I'm getting back into a pop. Uh, Shane Bieber made, I'm an adjustment guy, made some adjustments last year, got crushed by lefties. Mm. Uh, so you know, how do I fix that? Well, he started throwing his change up a lot more. He's a drive line guy. Went there this mm. offseason, ticked up his fastball velocity a little bit. Uh, but the pitch usage has been interesting. Um, he's actually throwing more four seamers, 35% last year, 41% this year. The big thing is uh, the change up went from three and a half, basically like non existent last year. Uh, he's thrown it 13% of the time. So he's using it uh, to get those lefties out. 
and uh, the sliders changed a little bit. That's gone up from 20% to 24%. Cutter is kind of the pitch that's taken the biggest hit. So um, I like when guys go and they have a plan. Okay, this is what's going wrong. How do I fix that? What's the equalizer for a lefty? It's the changeup. He goes, starts throwing that more, and he's had success. Like The strikeouts are up. He's looked dominant. Whether he's there all year or not, it is yet to be seen. But it is nice to see him back. I, I like why. I mean, he's a pitcher, man. Like, it's nice to see that. And shout out Stephen Vote. Is Vote the reason Uh-oh. these guys are winning? Uh oh. I like that though. I do like I do like Shane Bieber. Sam, Santa Barbara Gaucho, right? Ooh, I can double check. Hold. Pretty sure. I'll give it to you for now. Uh, yeah. Er, wait. Yeah, Santa Barbara, mm-hmm. Santa Barbara. Okay. Where are you going, okay. Trev? My award is called Slang That Thing mm. Award. Okay. And uh, it's funny, you know, like I um, I coach, you know, a youth team and I hear these kids talking and all the things they're saying. I think the biggest word that ki- like young boys say this like right now is bruh. Mm. It's bruh everything. I was on my I was on the phone with uh, my good friend Ollie Linton, uh, yeah. CAA um it's, agent he said he talked to you a little yeah. bit so he shot shot you a text and we were talking about uh kids and and i was asking how his kids are he's like man like he's like i think i'm a good dad but i'm i think i'm more like just an older brother and i'm like what do you mean he's like well i, I kind of travel a lot right now so when i get home like i just want to do all the fun things with my kids he's like so i just like play video games with them we like watch mm. movies together he's like i'm like a cool older brother and he goes, and they just don't re- really respect me at all. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, That's what do you so mean? Hard. He goes, well, my his youngest son, his name is Zion. And he said, he goes, Z baby doesn't even call me dad. He calls me Ollie. <laughs> so he said, I'll come home. He's like, hey, Ollie, what's up? <laughs> and he's like, I don't really know what to say to this kid. Yeah. You know, okay. And then he's like, you know, and then Kingston is his other son. And yes, Ollie is Jamaican. So uh, Kingston. Um, is balling out, playing some ball. So I was like, how's, how's that going? He goes, oh, he doesn't listen to me at all. I was like, I had the same thing with Teddy. Teddy like does not want to take really instruction from me. Right. Uh, and, he, and he says, Kingston is always saying, Dad, you're doing too much. Dad, you're doing too much. Pause. And I'm like, how old is he? What is he talking like? Pause goes, is crazy. It's, it's, it's all pause or bet. And I'm like, oh, man. Because Teddy says that to me all the time. Bro, okay, bet, bet, bet. So I've been hearing that a lot lately. You know who else has been hearing bet, bet, bet a lot lately? That freaking major league offensive leaderboard. Mm. It's littered with bets. Mm. Just like these youths out there saying bet, bet, bet. Major league offensive leaderboard is littered with bets. This dude Mookie bets. What are we doing, people? If you aren't paying attention to this, please pay attention, okay? Mookie leads all of baseball and wins above replacement. This guy's played nine games. Baseball reference has him listed at one and a half war. Kyle Schwarber had 1.4 war Mm. all last year. Think about that. Through nine games, right? Okay. He leads in batting average at 485. He leads it on base percentage at 595. He leads at slugging at 101.091, which means, of course, he leads in OPS at 1.6. He leads in plate appearances, runs scored, hits, total bases, home runs, RBIs, walks. Uh, it just down the list. All, mind you, while playing middle infield, mostly shortstop. Spent 10 years as an outfielder, winning gold gloves, and now he just switched over. So that's really impressive to me. The offensive stuff, like the home run he hit off Logan Webb is uh, is crazy. Logan Webb doesn't give up homers, especially on a pitch down in the zone like that. Mookie can do whatever he wants. And I think that's kind of where I want to end my award is people think this is so easy for Mookie, and maybe it is easier for him than it is for a lot of different people. But he came out and said, look, shortstop is not easy, and it's not going to be easy. And I did see him pregame 
working with Miggy Rowe out there, taking ground balls, trying to get better at a new position where I know he's going to floor. She's already doing it offensively. That's the the leaderboard littered with bets is kind of what I wanted to go with here. But this guy is putting the work in to be a star shortstop at the big league level after playing 10 seasons in the outfield. It is unheard of. Please pay attention to what this guy is doing. I think he's going to win the NL MVP because of what he's doing. And oh, yeah. By the way, after he was out there early taking ground balls, this is Mookie Betts, mind you. Yeah. A superstar in LA. He came over to the people that were on the field for batting practice and signed and took pictures with every single one. He even stopped and said, Hey, did you get one? Or is everyone good here? Before he went back into the dugout. This guy is a superstar in every single possible way you could use the word. And I just want people to make sure they're paying attention to this guy. Bet. Bet, bruh. Um, yeah, that's a. Uh... I there was a clip I did on Wake and Jake that that got a decent amount of run, and you can just see how twisted up I am because I'm rooting for Mookie Betts always. He's a generational ball player. He's awesome. He's he's Marcus Lynn Betts, MLB, right? Um, he's over thirty playing shortstop for the first time, and that's almost that's almost something sacred in its own right. Like you don't do that. You don't do that. Uh, I've completely flipped on it uh, because I want Mookie to succeed, and I, and I think he's going to. And like you said, he might do more than that. He might win the MVP. And this is – I'm not doing this for a clip, and we won't clip this part, but if he does this, Trev, if Mookie Betts has an MVP-esque type season from shortstop at his age and he keeps this rolling – like he's he has an argument for one of like best ball player all time. Yes. Um and that's kind of eye opening. Uh because it's yeah, it's Mookie Betts, he's good, MVP and you know great right fielder and all this. When you start mixing in shortstop and second base and uh I don't know, you know we we do our all JM team and we have the util spot you know, maybe maybe the easiest cop out of all time if Mookie keeps this up is like if you're building an MLB team and you have a util spot, Mookie gets that. I don't know, man. He's um he's doing things that haven't been done. I think this could go down if he continues this pace and and wins the MVP. I mean, obviously he's not going to one dot six it, but you know he has a a, a career year offensively while pl- moving to shortstop full time or middle infield full. T- you know he's going to play second base when Miggy Rowe plays short or whatever, right. mostly shortstop. It's going to go down as one of the most impressive seasons that we've ever seen in this sport. Being able to do that, and I and I really really mean it. And talk to talk to people that have played the game how hard shortstop is, and to do it at his age after not doing it for so long. And still playing offensively the way he's been playing, it's going to go down as one of the most impressive seasons we've ever seen in the game. I think this is one of the most impressive episodes we've ever had. Uh, I also, we love baseball guys. Uh, John Boy Media just tweeted it out. J.J. Hardy causing drama in Chandler, Arizona because he's building a baseball field in his backyard. And it's a two-minute local news clip. Uh, And that's just awesome. I love J.J. Hardy (laughs) so much. That's just awesome. J.J., I want to come take ground balls with you. Let's turn some just for old times. Oh, the boys. Well, hey, a little, you know, coming across the bag. A couple average white white dudes (laughs) playing middle infield. Okay. Okay. Uh, Don't see it too often. Trevor Plouffe, enjoy your weekend. Enjoy the baseball. I hope everyone enjoys the baseball. Uh, I hope there's no more earthquakes, I guess. Um, God, there will be Monday with talking baseball, baby. Stink. Shout out Kelsey Winger. Let's go, Kels. Get those boys rolling. Let's get a dub. Let's get a Rockies opening day dub. You never answered my question. Do you think CA is going to come through on the tickets for me? Maybe Sunday. Yeah. Come on, Nez. Come yeah. on, Nez. It's early in the year. 